Okay. Brian and Hunter, welcome to our Tuesday edition of physics class. Today we are having a little lab lab and we're discussing the lab that we completed yesterday. And we have made a sketch of dropping an object and launching it like we did with the golf ball and the rubber band. So we noticed that all the way across in the vertical direction, these uh, objects are exactly at the same height all the way down, the one dropped and the one launched. So we made a sketch of that on our day four slash five notes, which you already have. So also you can say the timing is to be equal here, timing to be equal. So. That's the part of the lab that we observed and now we wrote about, but we have not, we're not going to write that part up. Here's the part we are going to write up. The write up is going to be about the velocity. Remember how you took various equations and uh, wrestled with them and you found the velocity initial of the water balloon and the rubber band. RB and the golf ball, GB. So we have those three objects that we actually calculated, up, made observations and made measurements and found the actual initial velocity. So that's the part that I want to see, the calculations, the data. If you already have some data on your sheet in regards to timing this, it's okay. You can leave them on there. It's not required. The calculations I'm looking for and the data I'm looking for will be in regards to finding initial velocity of the balloon, the rubber band, and the golf ball. Remember, you have to do a, a procedure section explaining what was done in your own words. The results. What kind of results am I looking for in this lab, do you suppose, Emily, number one? What is the final thing you think that I would look for at the very end? Yeah, so that's it, the velocity of each object. And then it'd be super cool, peachy keen, if you compared them to one another. So if you would compare the velocities of one to the other, see which one, I'm assuming the water balloon got the, the uh, best velocity, the highest velocity, but I'm not positive. Show me what, how, which one came in first, which one came in second, which one came in third in this race to the death. Principles used, what are some principles that we use in every lab, every single one? Emily. Sig figs. Pardon? Sig, Sig figs. figs is a, a definitely a principle you should list in this section. What's another principle that's in every single lab? Back, pardon? Measuring. Measuring, definitely measurement and uh, to the correct precision as well. Um, unit conversion, some of us worked in meters and centimeters the whole time, but you might have to convert it from metrics to English or from one metric unit to another or English unit to another. So if you did, include uh, unit conversion. In addition though, in this lab only, what principles did we use that were new to this lab? So you should have the old principles, which appear almost in every lab, and what are some, a uh, measurement is another one that shows up. Did we say that? Measurement is a principle that we always have. Timing, we had, uh, I can't think right off of any others. Please add to the list if you can. But principles, what are some principles that were new to this lab that we haven't used in the previous? All right, Emily. Velocities of a dropped object. Right, that's definitely, we had to find the velocity, we had to understand uh, projectile motion, so projectile motion. Remember we had to know when you launch that balloon uh, out the window that initially the velocity in the y direction uh, was zero. So you can just call that projectile, principles of projectile motion will cover that. I guess gravity, the uh, gravitational constant is something that we used as well. So anything you can think of to put in that list, impress me with your list of principles. All right, the lab is due on Friday and again it only is for the velocity initial part of these three objects, it's not the timing. 
If you include it, I will be angry, but I'm not going to take off if you don't. All right, let's go ahead then and um, start talking about review. Those who didn't, only you, Alex, are we're, we're not we're here to finish the lab, so you need to get with me and finish the lab at some point and after school or sometime during school. So you can come with me since some ideas of when you can get with me. And uh, Miss Sarah, is it still going? Yeah. All right. Well, when I switch gears, we'll shut it down and uh, start again. So let me see your sketch. Did you get it finished? Yes, you did. Brian, did you get your sketch? Yep. Very good. Um, 2.54 centimeters is equal to an inch, right? Is equal to what? An inch. Yes. 2.54 centimeters is one inch. So how does a meter convert to a foot? How does a meter convert to feet? Is that what you said? Um, yeah. All right, so first of all, you take the meter, and then you go from meters to centimeters, from centimeters to inches, and inches to feet. So it's sort of step by step is my answer to that. All right, let's set, that's our lab lab, so we'll shut down this part of the video and start our <laughs> review exercise.